What's up guys, it's Tempers here back again for another thing of Need to Know News. Starting off, we have Watch Dogs Season Pass being revealed, uh, along with a trailer to be uh, embedded in the link that I'll put down in the description as well. Uh, the Season Pass is going to be at $19.99, and it offers savings of more than 25% versus buying each piece separately. And each piece that I'm talking about are going to be, you know, different packs, different parts, uh, missions, the DLC that you can play as. Uh, the Watch Dogs Season Pass gives players access to a unique single-player story also, featuring T-Bone, who is the brilliant but eccentric hacker, a new digital trip game mode, conspiracy, an exclusive untouchable pack, plus new missions, weapons, outfits, and more. And um, also, the achievements list for Watch Dogs was posted online. I will try to link it in the description, but I think they might have removed it because uh, Ubisoft did not want people to see the achievement list. Uh, as, of course, a person from the Watchdog Ubisoft community has been leaking information, as it has always happened when new games like Destiny and when Titanfall were about to come out, you know. Um, so it's going to be showing a grand total of 50 achievements for the game, and then Watch Dogs is uh, slated to release May 27th for the Xbox One, Xbox 360, PlayStation 3, PlayStation 4, and PC. And in Halo news... Uh, recently, it has been said that on May 31st, 2014, GameSpy, who runs the uh, PC side of Halo, uh, of course, um, Halo 2, they stopped running it on the PC um, not too long ago, but uh, like a few months ago or something like that. And uh, most of the people probably went to go play Halo Combat Evolved on the PC, and when they heard this news that it was going to be shut down on the 31st because GameSpy did not renew their licensing, uh, they were probably pretty upset. But a new update. Uh, it has been confirmed from Game Ranger that they are going to be hosting and running Halo Combat Evolved, uh, Halo Combat Evolved demo, and Halo Custom Edition on the PC. So now all you Halo PC fans can rejoice because your game is not going anywhere, at least not for some time, as long as Game Ranger has their licensing. So they're going to be taking over over GameSpy. Next Halo uh, bit of news I have is next Halo to have competitive focus? Question mark. In a recent job listing on the Microsoft Careers website, 353 Industries are looking to hire a new senior multiplayer designer for an upcoming Halo title in the future. 353 Industries is looking for a dynamic and experienced creative contributor who has a passion to design the world's greatest games. As a senior multiplayer designer on the Halo team, you will be responsible for implementation and execution of features within the competitive multiplayer PvP experience. The 343 competitive multiplayer team designs, implements, and executes on the player versus player experience including game modes, map feedback, moment to moment gameplay balancing, and cross team collaboration. We are looking for an experienced designer to support and develop the Halo competitive multiplayer experience. Responsibilities include balancing and tuning uh, exiting existing competitive experiences, uh, creating, developing, and delivering all new Halo multiplayer game modes. And that was said by 3 3 Industries. And uh, with recent hires to 3 3 3 Industries such as Lennox Cool Gamer, Eric Ghost, Yami Hewitt, Mason Neighbor Cobb, and Sean Dursky Swiderski, who all come from competitive backgrounds in the gaming community, and this job listing, it is pretty clear that not only is 3 3 3 Industries taking competitive gaming seriously for the upcoming Halo title, but that they are going to try to uh, make up for the disappointing game that they made uh, at the end of 2012 called Halo 4. Uh, the job listing also mentions delivering brand new Halo multiplayer game modes, quotations, um, so we can expect maybe some new ones coming in, hopefully some old ones that they left out for Halo 4, including VIP, um, Assault, they also left out, um, well, they didn't really leave it out, but, you know, Oddball wasn't what it was in Halo 4, and Capture the Flag wasn't what it was, you couldn't run the flag, and now they are trying to do some Brett Favre stuff, you know, with throwing the Oddball, and that's why that wasn't in competitive play in Halo 4, but it's really cool that they're taking it a lot more seriously than I thought they were, so, um, uh, and then Race and Headhunter also were in the past Halo, so hopefully we can see a huge playlists maybe not too big because you know we don't want to split the community up in those playlists too much uh so people don't get bored and all that but uh another uh halo news there is a halo 5 hype trailer that was made by a fan in the halo community i, I think it's pretty cool it's nothing really too special it's two minutes long he mixes the halo 5 trailer uh that was produced by 33 industries earlier uh this year i think it was this year 
uh, with his own little, you know, he, he added the ending of Halo 4, so if you haven't beaten Halo 4 yet, I wouldn't watch it because it's a spoiler alert. And then also, he posted a Halo 5 menu, uh, which he also created, um, what he thinks the Halo menu might look like, and I think that it looks pretty accurate. Um, until he gets into the, um, like, more in-depth, you know, multiplayer lobby and stuff like that. But the beginning looks very, very accurate of what 3v3 might create. Um, he also has, so he has the start screen, co-op campaign lobby, player customization, multiplayer lobby, matchmaking lobby, matchmaking playlists, and matchmaking filters. So you can check that out down below. And in the last bit of Halo news that I have for you guys today, Showtime is going to air Spielberg's Halo series, maybe. In a recent news report, Variety is reporting that Showtime, the network that brought you Dexter, is in talks with Microsoft to bring Steven Spielberg's Halo TV series to the network as well as Xbox Live. The Xbox Entertainment Studios is apparently in major talks with the network to produce and air Spielberg's Halo series with Xbox production units Nancy Tellum making the push. Last year, during the Xbox One reveal event, 3 3 Industries head Bonnie Ross and Nancy took to the stage to announce a Halo TV series. The reason the talks between both Halo Xbox and Showtime have lasted so long is because both companies are trending into unknown territory and trying to make the show work when being produced for Showtime, as well as Xbox One with its ever-evolving interactivity. While details are still being ironed out, the plan so far is for episodes to air first on Showtime, shortly following it on Xbox Live. Earlier this week, Microsoft announced a list of Xbox original series coming in the future. These included Spielberg's Halo series, Ridley Scott's Halo digital feature, and much more. And I'll put that in the description below so you can check it out. Also, please leave a comment down below of uh, if you're excited or not for this new Halo television series. Um, personally, I'm not really sure if it's going to come even close to rivaling Dexter or any of these shows like Fargo, Justified, The Walking Dead, and of course um, Game of Thrones. I think it'll be interesting, but I feel like it's going to be one of those shows where they run it for a little bit and then they cut it off because they're not getting enough uh, people watching it. So, But um, I'll definitely be watching every single episode because I'm a huge Halo nerd. So... Uh, with Halo news ending, we've got one or a few things of Destiny news. Um, of course, I linked below last week that there is a page on TeamBeyond.net that they are just going to keep updating with Destiny news. Uh, it's going to be um, having cross-generation saves, Guardian focuses, skill builds, the director and game modes, level cap, player counts in E3 2014, PC release might be considered, and much more. And I'll put that so you can check it down below, along with some cool pictures and a cool video. And today, Destiny developer um, Bungie released a diary for their armor, weapons, and loot. They talk about how when you kill enemies, you know, let's say you're playing Diablo, or you're playing um, some other game like Borderlands, um, you know, when you kill somebody and you're playing multiplayer, you guys usually have to fight over the loot, you know, even in World of Warcraft, you know, um, you guys have to roll dice over it, you know, and um, instead of fighting over it, they created this really cool system to where everything that the enemy that you just killed drops, including ammo, loot, and anything else, um, weapon customizations, all that, it's only going to be dropping for you. And I'm not sure if if you kill the enemy, will other stuff drop for your teammates? I'm not sure about that, but I know that when you get something dropped by the enemy, it will only be viewable by you. So there will be no more fighting for loot and uh, ammo and all that stuff, weapon skins, so I think that's really cool. They also talk about how there's three different classes for um, weapons. Not that there's only three weapons, but there's, uh, you know, you've got your rifles, you've got your heavies, and then you've got your specials, like, um, you know, weapons with special powers and all that stuff. And then you've got your armor, how they were talking about that. Maybe you'll notice that a level five guy sitting at the top of a tower, you'll see him as a normal guy, and then you look over, and you'll see a level 23 guy, and he's going to be wearing some really handcrafted awesome stuff. And they talk about how all this stuff was handcrafted by their designers and stuff, and there's a cool video and stuff. But, of course, um, even though it comes out September 9th, 2014 for the for the uh, Xbox One and Xbox 360, I really feel like it's very exclusive to the PlayStation 4 and PlayStation 3, mainly the PlayStation 4. Um, even the video was exclusive to PlayStation 4, so uh, it sucks, you know. But they did strike a deal with uh, Sony, so I can't really blame them. And then uh, Xena, 
She has joined Bungie. If you don't know who Xena is, she was the first professional female Halo player in 2005, I want to say 2005, 2006, somewhere around there. And um, after she stopped competing, she did cosplay. She worked for Astro at the Major League Gaming events, selling uh, headsets and all that stuff. But now she's been picked up by Bungie, so it'll be interesting to see what kind of role she plays. Um, I know she hasn't really been a, a big competitor in a long time, so I'm not really sure what they're going to have. She, the only thing she had to say is that she's excited to uh, say that she joined the Talented Bungie team and she'll be working with Destiny. And that's all she said. And also there is a throwback video in the description that I'll throw down below where you can check her out when she was a professional video game player in 2005. She was also featured on MLG's True Life. Um, T Squared was also featured on that too. And um, recently she's been working on events for companies like G4 TV and then I also said Astro Gaming for Major League Gaming and stuff. So it'll be cool to see a um, experienced gamer being uh, in Bungie. Kind of how like uh, we've got a couple professional video game players in 3v3 working on Halo. And with Halo, Destiny, and Watchdog news over, we're going to move on to Call of Duty news. And we've got a lot. So, the first thing I want to talk about is Call of Duty Advanced Warfare um, re being revealed on May 4th. Um, there is a video down below where it shows... Um, well, there's, there's two different trailers. One trailer is a live-action trailer with actual real people talking about stuff that's in the game that relates to real life and all this stuff. And um, you can check it out down below. And... Um, it looks cool, you know. The game looks cool. You have exoskeletons and stuff, but I think they're they're turning into Halo. They're straying away from the core, you know. But it'll be interesting to see, you know. I don't really think it could get much worse than Call of Duty Ghosts, but this is going to be the first Call of Duty that's going to come out at the end of this year. I believe they said that it's going to be coming out November fourth. I could be wrong, but um, I'm pretty sure it says in the video when it's going to be coming out. And, um, like I said, it took uh, three years for Sledgehammer to make this game. It's the first Call of Duty in the uh, series to have three years put into it, of course. Every single other Call of Duty has only had one year spent on it, but it's a new thing Activision is doing. Uh, Sledgehammer, they're rolling out this game uh, at the end of this year. Three years worked on it. N at the end of next year, we're going to have Treyarch roll out their Call of Duty game, and they're going to... You know, they've spent almost three years now on the game. And then, of course, Infinity Ward will come out with um, the next Call of Duty at the end of that year. So even right now, Infinity Ward is probably working on the next Call of Duty. Well, not the next Call of Duty, but the next, next Call of Duty, which is crazy to think about. Because how can you work on a game when you don't really have feedback yet for the game that's supposed to be coming out at the end of this year? So... I don't know. Activision is trying something new. So, it's okay. Next piece of Call of Duty information is the actual game trailer of Advanced Warfare. Um, no gameplay in it. No multiplayer. Kind of disappointing, but it's a cool epic trailer. And um, it has... What's his name in it? It has Kevin Spacey um, as the main antagonist, it seems like, in the game. So, it looks like you've got uh, some vehicles, you've got a mech you can get into, something that resembles Promethean Vision from Halo, uh, a bunch of pictures that you can look at, and uh, yeah, looks pretty cool, I'd say. And, of course, more Advanced Warfare Call of Duty information. The Warfare Personalization Pack, um, you're going to get a weapon camo, a reticule, a player card, and a background, and a patch for Call of Duty Ghost for Call of Duty Black Ops 2. You're going to get a weapon camo, calling card, three reticules, and that's only going to be available on select scopes. And, of course, that has been leaked. Um, and I believe that is only when you pre-order the game from Game UK. Um, and you have to call, and you have to pre-order it on the Xbox One, PlayStation 4, Xbox 360, or PlayStation 3 from that retailer. And then you're going to receive those personalization packs. Other than that, I believe that's all you get at this time for that game for pre-ordering. And some more Advanced Warfare news. Uh, we've got box art of what the front of the box of this is going to come in will look like. 
Uh, it looks pretty cool. I like the art, but it looks too simple. You know, like they just plopped it on there and stuff. And we've got uh, Sledgehammer only developing Call of Duty on current gen. So it's going to be the same thing as with uh, Bluepoint developing the game Titanfall for the Xbox 360. They didn't really develop it, but they just fine-tuned it and made sure that everything was okay for them to put it on the Xbox 360. And of course, Respawn Entertainment made the game for the uh, current gen, which is the Xbox One. Now, Sledgehammer is going to be making Call of Duty Advanced Warfare only for the Xbox One and PlayStation 4. Um, another developer whose name uh, has not been announced yet, doesn't look like, will be fine-tuning it and making it look nice for the PlayStation 3 and Xbox 360. Hopefully there will not be delay, of course, with the Titanfall game. There were two delays, and it pushed it back all the way to April 4th when the game came out. Um, it came out March 11th. I believe it came out April 4th. I could be wrong. Anyway, uh, next piece of Call of Duty information. Infinity Ward and Neversoft Emerging Companies. So, Neversoft, of course, is the company that made Tony Hawk's Pro Skater and the recent Guitar Hero games. And he also helps a little bit on Call of Duty Ghosts. They pretty much just uh, helps with Extinction and some other things. So, Infinity Ward is going to be merging with Neversoft. Since Infinity Ward has the rights to Call of Duty, they're going to stay as Infinity Ward. So, Neversoft, the name, the brand, the company, will disappear. So, pretty much, it's just the employees and the company, Neversoft, going into Infinity Ward. So, the name's going to stay the same. More employees, more people working on it, yada yada. We'll see what happens um, when the... Next Infinity Ward Call of Duty game comes out um, in 2016, which doesn't really make any sense, does it? Yes, it does. Yes, it does. Because at the end of 2015, I said Treyarch. At the end of 2016, it's supposed to be Infinity Ward, and then at, at the end of 2017, it's going to be Sledgehammer again. Okay, so we're we're good with the cycle there. Um, and this was said by Eric Hirschberg, who is the CEO of Activision, who is the boss of Infinity Ward, Sledgehammer, and Treyarch. Okay. And UGC Niagara 2014 results have been uh, out for about a day. And, of course, that was the most recent uh, competitive Call of Duty tournament, which rivals Major League Gaming. Not as big, but, you know, still a good uh, payout and a good turnout with 65,000 plus concurrent viewers on Championship Sunday, which is a brand new record for UMG. The top eight placings are as followed. Complexity of the game gets $10,000 getting first place. Second place, Team Envious, $4,000. Third place, Vex Gaming with $3,000. Fourth place, Optic Nation with $2,000. Fifth place, Phase Black with $1,000. And sixth is Strictly Business. Seventh, through eight, seventh, eighth is Optic Gaming. And seventh, eighth is Team Calibre because they don't play Constellation. So let's talk about what is interesting with these placings. Complexity winning, not a surprise. And becoming second, uh... Not really surprised. They came in second at the uh, championship. Vex Gaming, um, nice to see some new faces. Now, Optic Nation got fourth place. Optic Gaming got seventh slash eighth. Interesting. Optic Nation is the team that is um, very new. They used to be called Optic Nation, but um, they turned into Optic Gaming, and now, since they were going to drop Optic Embos, they decided instead of kicking them out of, well, not kicking them out of the house, but instead of, um, you know, booting him from the team, they decided to give him his own team, and of course, he selected Ricky, Killa, and Miracles to join the team, and they took fourth, three spots higher than Optic Gaming, who is, of course, Nade Shot, Scumpy, Clayster and Proofy. So, hmm, that is interesting, you know. Maybe it'll make him rethink. Should we have dropped Embos? You know, maybe Proofy's better. I mean, maybe maybe Embos is better, you know. Because Embos is an objective player and Proofy is a slayer. So it's kind of interesting, you know, picking up somebody who plays completely different in a different category than the person you just dropped. So. Um, look at the other places. Phase Black, who has Formal, the Halo Pro on. 
Um, it's nice that he outplays the team that he left, which was Team Caliber. Strictly business. Um, you know, all these, all these different. You know, I'm not, I'm not gonna knock. I'm not gonna knock. I'm not gonna knock Phase Black, Strictly Business, or Team Caliber because, uh, well, you know what? I'm not gonna knock Strictly Business or Team Caliber because they kind of got effed over. Strictly Business, Dito and Sensor left, and Team Caliber, uh, Formal, and I believe. I'm not sure who else left Team Caliber, but the thing that happened was Phase Black offered Formal. And whoever else left, I think it was a Pathy, I'm not too sure. More money than Team Calibre could, which really isn't fair. FaZe is a huge, huge organization. They started as a clan, a sniping clan, putting YouTube videos up with them just sniping people, montages and stuff. And they made fast money that way. And now it's a huge, huge brand team that is... Phase is behind two or three different teams. I know there's Phase Red and Phase Black. I'm not sure if there's a different Phase team. I know there's a Phase Sniping team, so okay, that could be counted as three. But it's not really fair to Team Calibre. Team Calibre is kind of new in the scene, in the Call of Duty esports scene, and they can't really fork up that much money. You know, they're growing. They are growing. But right now, it wouldn't be smart, you know, so it's kind of unfair. But, uh... You know, that's why you kind of need to make your players sign contracts if you want them to stay. So those are the placings for UMG. The next UMG event that you can uh, check out will be returning to Dallas in August. And, um, yeah, that's it for UGC. Or, um, no, that's it for UMG. I'm getting confused here. UMG and UGC are two different uh, tournaments. So, uh, so that was UGC Niagara. UMG is going to be the one in Dallas in August. I'm sorry about that. Okay, the next and last piece of news is we're going to be having another update for the Xbox One. And it's going to be coming this month. It has not been announced yet, but it's coming this month. The things that they're going to be changing is uh, not too big. Some slightly modifying uh, updates. They are going to be messing with the chat mixer, which um, will make it so you can turn down other sounds while you're talking with the Kinect, so things don't, you know, get in the, don't interrupt you in the in the uh, conversations that you're having having and stuff. And then uh, improvements and fixes, they're going to update uh, to help address issues when where the game DVR clips may be recorded without audio. Underlying OS changes required to enable Plan 1405 features. And the new additions, you're going to have Snap and Connect audio controls, opt-in to help us improve speech recognition, and what that means is that you can download something so that you could be um, in the beta to help Xbox make their Connect services better. And uh, then they're going to have the Test the System Update button, which is pretty much the same thing I just said. It's just going to be included in there. So pretty much what they're going to do is they're just going to make it so your friends and notifications will be popping up. They're going to make it so your connect when you talk, it'll be able to hear you a lot more clearly than it already does. And they're going to be fixing a little tiny things that, you know, aren't important to some people. So that's all I have for you guys today on Need to Know News. Um, one thing that I want to talk about before I go is I just joined this clan slash team on Call of Duty called uh, Restraint is Power. I am um, kind of the PR, public relations, you know, the guy that spreads the word about RIP. Um, that's my position in the clan because the team is already full of four players, and those players are going to be competing in the future tournaments in Call of Duty. And then once the clan gets um, pretty big, we're going to have a Halo team, and that's only going to happen when the next Halo comes out, which should be at the end of this year. And I'm going to predict that it's going to be Halo 2 Anniversary. And then um, I'm going to come out with a video talking about all this stuff um, tomorrow. So you can expect that. So I run the YouTube, I run the email, and I run the Twitter. I'm, I might make a Facebook thing, but yeah. Um, and I also gave the password and username to the person that runs the clan and stuff. So they can check it out. And um, right now there's only about... 12, 13, 14, I'll say 12 at the most people in the clan. It just started about a week and a half ago, so not bad, you know. Anyways, my name's Temporistic. You can like, favorite, comment, do, 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 everything down to do, 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 and I'll see you later, do, 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 do. Peace.